Hello everyone, I'm Tony with Architect Fitness and in this video we are going to be talking about the differences between what you would experience at Architect Fitness versus your average CrossFit gym. Over the years on our website we've written dozens of articles and we are currently in the process of taking some of those articles and turning them into videos to keep the content up to date but also make it more accessible to you. One of those articles was Architect versus CrossFit. The reason we wrote that article was because sometimes potential customers get us confused with CrossFit or our current members try to refer friends and family and they say, oh, I don't want to go do CrossFit. And our members who maybe don't know anything about CrossFit don't really know how to explain the differences between what we do and what you'd expect at a CrossFit gym. We've decided to take that article and bump it to the top of our list to turn into a video because of some of the recent events surrounding CrossFit. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, basically the owner and founder of CrossFit headquarters, Greg Glassman, made some pretty poor choices as, in terms of what he was saying on social media. And it also came to light some of the interactions he had personally with some CrossFit affiliate gym owners. And if you are paying someone thousands of dollars a year to be a CrossFit affiliate, the way he was speaking to these people, in my opinion, was completely unacceptable and definitely unprofessional. If you want to know more, you can just research it on your own. It's very easy to find and I encourage you to do so. But I thought there was no better time to continue to further distance ourselves from the CrossFit name. Here's the cliff notes on this video. We are not, have never been, and will never be a CrossFit gym. But if you want to know a little bit more about the differences, stay tuned and we're going to cover it right now. So the first thing to get out of the way is simply that CrossFit is a corporation that sells affiliations. So CrossFit started in the mid 2000s and started with a single gym and was built up to a much bigger company and started selling affiliations. An affiliation is where you pay a certain amount of money and meet some basic standards and then you get to use the name of that company on your own small business. But from there, you're really free to kind of do what you want. This is different from a franchise where with a franchise, you are given a complete structure top to bottom on how to run your business. And that is what you are really paying for, not just the name of the franchise, but also kind of the infrastructure to really make a profitable business. So for example, if you were to go into a McDonald's here in New Hampshire and get a cheeseburger and then fly to California and have one there, your experience from one location to the next is going to be almost identical in terms of the way the facility looks, the way the staff is dressed, your experience with the staff, the way the food is prepared, the cost of the food, all of that is going to be very similar. With, a with an affiliate, that is not the case. So we have right here in town, two CrossFit gyms that are down the street from one another. If you go to one in the morning and go to the other in the afternoon, your experience could be entirely different from one location to the next because they are allowed to make their own class schedules. They are allowed to write any type of workouts that they want. They can have any type of other auxiliary services that they might offer. So some CrossFit gyms do personal training, some do open gym, some don't do either of those things. So your experience is going to be very different from one location to the next. But generally what you will find in a CrossFit gym in terms of services is group-based fitness. So that is probably one of the biggest differences between CrossFit and Architect Fitness because at this time, we do not offer any group fitness training. With that said, it is something we might offer in the future. I do have kind of on my bucket list the idea of building the gym up to the point where we offer something for literally everyone, regardless of what works best for them. But what we do now are open gym individualized programs is our core service and that is going to remain our core service as long as we're in business. The second point we wanna talk about is the type of training that we do at Architect Fitness versus what you're going to find in your average CrossFit. Now this is a bit of a gray area because CrossFit isn't exactly a training method. It's really just a brand. And because each gym is allowed to run different programs, what you might experience from one location to the next is going to be a lot different. So some CrossFit gyms might emphasize strength training more while others might emphasize that high intensity metabolic conditioning that kind of made CrossFit so popular. So it really just depends on which location you're going to. 
With that said, the bulk of CrossFit training tends to be timed workouts with some type of scoring system, usually some type of high pace, interval-based training, and that is something we do at Architect, but very rarely. Most brands in the fitness space sell you on a type of training. So whether you go to CrossFit or something like a spin class or yoga or Orange Theory, those brands are telling you, this is how you want to train regardless of what your goal is. We're an architect, we start with the client and work backwards from there. So while we do follow some certain training principles and training philosophies that are based on science and experience, the training from one individual to the next might look quite a bit different based on that person's goals, their health history, their exercise experience, their schedule, their level of comfort. All of that is going to dictate the programs we write. And that's the next point, which is at Architect, we only do individualized training programs. That means that everyone's program is going to look somewhat different from one another because they're different people. We're at group training fitness and not just at CrossFit, but most group training. Everyone comes into a class time, everyone performs the same workout with maybe some slight modifications to make it easier or harder for particular individuals, and that's it. So it doesn't make sense for us to train people like that because people's goals do vary so widely. We also do tend to make strength training the backbone of most of our programs, and that's because strength is the foundation for all other human movement. Now, I don't wanna to get too much off on a tangent here, but I do want you to ask yourself two really easy questions. Number one is, what do steroids do? And this is not a trick question. We all probably recognize that steroids are a drug that make people stronger. So if that's the case, why then do we see athletes who don't compete in strength sports failing drug tests for steroids? So if you go onto USADA's sanctioned athlete list or WADA's sanctioned athlete list, you will find athletes from sports like track and field, cycling, swimming, sports that we don't necessarily consider traditionally strength-based sports, yet those athletes are taking steroids. Why is that? It's because being stronger is so important regardless of what sport you compete in or what your goal is. That's why most of our training programs are have a foundation of strength training. CrossFit, again, does do some of this, and it really just depends on the location you go to. But I will tell you a funny story, which is that over the years, CrossFit has started to incorporate more and more traditional strength training into their programs, and over the years, they've been producing better and better athletes. And I think back to Chris Spieler, who was a CrossFit Games athlete, and this was quite a few years ago now, and he was being interviewed about his training leading up to the CrossFit Games. And he said, I'm doing Metcon, metabolic conditioning workouts, two or three times a week, and then I'm doing Jim Wendler's 531 program. And if you're not familiar, that is a very bare bones, straight up strength training, powerlifting style program. You go in, you do heavy squats, heavy bench, heavy deadlift, pull-ups and overhead press, and that's pretty much it. And the guy interviewing Chris Spieler said, so would you say you, you're only doing CrossFit twice a week? And Chris Spieler said, oh no, it's, it's all CrossFit. And I thought that was kind of funny because if you asked Jim Wendler if his program 531 was CrossFit, he'd probably say no and then have some choice words for you. But that is somewhat of the genius of the CrossFit brand because they were so loosely defined, they were then able to take everything and say, oh, this is all under the umbrella of CrossFit. And so they got to take credit for a lot of things that they really didn't have anything to do with. Now, does that mean that CrossFit's no good? No, CrossFit's not better or worse than what we do at Architect Fitness, it's just different. There are some people that really enjoy that high intensity conditioning type of training. There are some people that need a class time to keep them accountable but that's just not what we do. And when we started Architect Fitness, we looked at what was available on the fitness market. We saw a gap in services and I thought, you know what, a lot of people could use this type of service, let's do it. So we opened up and we have been successful with it because we are filling a need in the market that previously was not really addressed. And I would say the last thing that is different between CrossFit and Architect Fitness is probably just the general philosophies on training. And this goes back a little bit to 
kind of that class atmosphere versus the individual programs that we talked about. One of Greg Glassman's famous statements from early on was that the needs of Olympians and the needs of our grandparents vary by intensity and not by type. And what that means essentially is all the movements that they do in CrossFit are the best exercises to do, but if you're in not as good a shape, you would simply want to dial back the weight or perform the workouts uh, less quickly. I don't agree with that at all. In fact, that's not really that statement's not backed up by any legitimate science or even basic observations. Not only do the needs of Olympians vary a lot depending on which sport they compete in, but sometimes the needs of athletes that play the same sport vary a lot based on the position that they play in that sport. And a good example is football. If you are an offensive lineman or a wide receiver, those two positions require really different body types, really different types of training. It would not make any sense to train those two people the same way. So it doesn't make sense to me that we would train an Olympian the same way as we would train our grandparents. Different people need different things based on their health history, their exercise experience, and their goals. Different goals require different types of training. I understand the sentiment that Greg Glassman was trying to say with that statement, which is that you know there are some good exercises and there's some bad exercises. But in reality, I've found that there are no bad exercises, only bad applications of specific exercises. And some movements just don't really pop up that often in programs because not a lot of people need them. That doesn't make that exercise bad or useless. So I am done rambling now. Those are the major differences between CrossFit and what you're going to experience at Architect Fitness. I hope this answered some of the questions that people have and cleared up any uh, misinformation out there. I will end this video by saying I do feel for all of my friends in the CrossFit community right now, my friends that go to CrossFit, coach at CrossFit, or own a CrossFit gym. Everyone involved is in a tough spot right now because you are a big part of the community and you are paying a lot of money to be part of that community and by using that CrossFit name it really should only benefit your small business not hinder it and to see the comments and behavior of some of that upper management and ownership is really disappointing and I think everyone in the community is kind of in a tough spot right now so it is going to be interesting to see how that plays out but I just wanted to make it clear for everyone as I've said already in this video we are not, have never been, and will never be a CrossFit gym. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and we'll see you in the next video.